Hi everybody, my name is Rick, I'm the OG, welcome to OGMTB. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you might know I do this kind of flyby, this little intro into my videos, let people know where I'm at. Kind of like this one. Most of the challenging sections of this ride come along the Butcher Ranch Trail. There you'll find the infamous waterfall and the canyon features. At the top, you'll begin with either the Sunrise or the Pack Saddle Loop Trail. Both are awesome warm-up trails to get you started. And it all begins at Packer Saddle, just beneath the stunning Sierra Buttes. And so, I'm not the biggest channel in the world, and so I don't get that many comments. But a few comments that I have gotten are questions about how I do that little flyby intro. So today's video, I'm going to show you what I do to make that happen. So there's a couple of things you'll need before you can do these flybys. First of all, you'll need to install Google Earth on your computer if you don't have it already. Uh, I installed it for free a few years ago. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of codes you can find to install it for free now. The second thing you'll need to do is find a way to get your trail information uploaded into Google Earth. And there's a few ways you can do that. The first way to do that would be to directly upload data from your own GPS into Google Earth. Make sure your GPS is attached to your computer. Then go to the upper left hand portion of the screen, click tools, click GPS, and it will walk you through all of the processes needed to upload your files to Google Earth. So the second way you can get the trail data into Google Earth is by uploading it from a secondary source such as Trailforks. Once you've logged into Trailforks, you can move over to the search menu and type in the name of the trail that you're looking for. Once the trail page opens, scroll all the way down and on the bottom right hand side, you'll see a tab that says download. Once you click that tab, you'll see there's a few options to choose from. You can download it to your phone, you can download it to your Garmin, there's a few other options there, but what we want to choose is the GPX KML file. Once on this page, you can see there's a few options to choose from. You can choose to download a GPX file, which will put the file directly on your computer and you can have it there for other options, or you can go to the download a KML file. The download a KML file will upload the information and data directly onto Google Earth. Oh yeah, you will have to agree to Trailforks conditions. Once the KML file is downloaded, all you gotta do is click on it, and if Google Earth is open, it will open up and show you the trail on Google Earth. Now you wanna go ahead and repeat that process for all of the trails you wanna showcase on the flyover. Okay, just a little tip right here. Um, Trail Forks will only allow you to download, I think five trails per day. Um, although if you really are a big contributor to Trail Forks, I think that um, limit will be increased. So the more you contribute, the more you can download. All right, so the third and final way to get the trail data into Google Earth is to enter it directly. And to do that, basically, we're going to zoom into a little, uh, a well-known riding location here in Spokane known as Beacon Hill. All right, so we'll zoom into the top of Beacon Hill right here. And when you zoom in far enough, you can see the trails literally on Google Earth. And the way to enter that data into uh, Google Earth so you can highlight it in your flyby is to first off by going up to this little ruler right here. Click on the ruler and you'll see there's a lot of options here. Basically, we just want to pick path. Path gives us the option to uh, navigate around turns and, and basically uh, make the line go wherever we want. 
a line is just a straight line. So for this use, we're gonna we're gonna do path. You can. I also like to leave the mouse navigation on that way I can move the screen around uh, wherever I want it to be. So basically, what you want to do is you open up this up. You get to the path, zoom in to where you want it to go. Um, and you can kind of see when you zoom in, I have it set so when you zoom in, it changes the angle a little bit. But for this purpose, I like to keep it straight overhead. I think it's easier to see the trails overhead and keep things due north. So we're going to go back to this trail right here and we'll start by putting our initial spot right there. All right, once you've got that initial uh, waypoint, just keep adding waypoints and you can see it will draw a little path along where you're making the waypoints and if you notice it's a really accurate way of putting the data into Google Earth uh, the trail is quite accurately measured this way So I've continued along the trail here, marking it as I go, and you can see one of the major limitations of entering the trail data in this way is you can run out of trail data. If you can't see it from the satellite view, it's really hard to know where the trail goes. All right, now that we've got our trails into Google Earth, it's time for the fun stuff. Basically, the first thing we want to do is go up to the My Places and right click My Places hit add and folder and we're going to call this test tour and we're going to go ahead and hit ok then it'll come down in my places right at the end it'll be your last file that uh, on all of your files it'll be the last one right above temporary places now that we're already in that file what we want to do is add some waypoints or spots of interest along the way first thing we'll do is we're going to click place mark so now that we see a point here we can click on this and drag it to pretty much wherever we want to go set it down and uh, i oftentimes don't like to label these i just like to leave them blank uh, unless it's really important that uh, that I label it, I like to leave them blank because then it doesn't take up the extra image on the screen. Next, you decide what your view is going to be. So click view, and then we're going to go and I'm going to zoom in real good here. And you can adjust the view pan and however you want it to look from there. You can decide whatever view is best for you. Once you've determined that's the best view for you, Come back over to view, click snapshot current view, click OK, and that spot ends up in your test tour. And we're just going to put one more in here to show you how it's done. Uh, I'm going to put one more place mark right here down by this little lake. And I am going to turn it a little bit, give us a little bit different perspective on this one and maybe give it a little bit like that maybe uh, I don't really like that view so let's turn it around I like this one a little bit better so now we're gonna go over to view snapshot current view and hit OK and then we'll put one more at our destination which is gonna be this little lake and then we're gonna hit view snapshot current view and hit OK now we've got our tour Okay, so now you've got your tour all laid out. You've got your place marks where you want them. Uh, now, how do you view your tour? Uh, first thing I like to do is zoom out to a, an angle or a perspective that makes some sense to the viewer uh, to give them an idea of where you're starting the whole tour off in. So this kind of view right here at least gives people a good idea of where the trail is. I also like to tilt the angle a little bit to give it just a, a little bit more perspective of the earth. Now we're going to watch the test tour that we just created. So you come back over here to your My Places file. You click on Test Tour. 
Once you've done that, you'll see there's a little file that is available to click on. Click Play Tour and you will be zoomed right down in to your tour. You can control the speed of the tour with the action buttons in the lower left of the screen. For the purposes of this video, I sped it up a bit, but normally I'll record it at the slower speed and I'll make any changes in the final editing. This tip is pretty important. If you want to give depth to your tour, you want to make sure that you have the terrain feature activated in the database on the left hand side of the screen. So if you have the terrain feature clicked, you can see all the mountains and ridges. If you unclick the terrain feature, not a whole lot there to see. So very important to keep that terrain feature clicked. The first thing you'll want to do to make your trails more visible is to right click on the trail and you'll see a drop down menu up here. Go down to properties and then you'll see some more options. Click style and color. There you can change the color to virtually whatever color you would like to choose. And you can also make it wider or more narrow. Just be sure to click OK when you're done making changes to save the changes that you made. And now you can see it's much easier to see that trail. Changing placemark icons is actually pretty simple. You just right click on the placemark, scroll down to properties. And then on the right hand side here, you'll see there is a button for icons. Click that and there is a whole bunch of different icons that are preset that you can choose from. If you want to add your own, click down here in the bottom left, add custom icon. It'll ask you to browse, find the icon you want to upload. I'm going to upload this little outhouse right there. And we're going to say, okay. And there it is. Now I can choose it. And there we go. Make sure you hit OK. And you got yourself a little outhouse. I should have made this tip number one. Google Earth does have a tendency of crashing sometimes. So I like to make sure I am repeatedly saving. Pretty much I save after I do anything, such as add a trail, change an icon, anything like that. So to do that, you go right up over here into the left-hand corner, hit File, hit Save, go over to Save My Places, hit Save My Places, and you're done. But super important to remember to save your files. All right, so that's how I create the Google Earth flyby. I basically just scratch the surface of what Google Earth has to offer. I really encourage you to use your imagination and experiment with the different tools Google has to offer. If you figured out any other cool ways to use Google Earth, uh, let me know in the comments below. Also, if this video helped you create a Google Earth flyby, let me know. I'd love to check it out. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, what the heck are you waiting for? And never forget to look behind you, because there might be an old guy coming in hot.